Hello, hello, and welcome to the Healthy but Human podcast. My name is Callie. I'm your podcast host, and I'm so excited to have you here today. We have a special guest on the show. We're chatting all things wellness, specifically with your gut health, and just some basic college advice with Lily Raquel. So you probably know her from the 8020 podcast. Her podcast is pretty similar in the topics that she covers lots of things about how to navigate your 20s and specifically in areas of wellness, mental, physical, and spiritual health, all those things. So you guys, if you haven't already heard of Lily, definitely go check out her podcast. We did a little swap. So you can go check it out after this. But you guys, I am so excited for today's episode. But before we do anything, before we do anything, we need to do our self-check-in. If you're new to the podcast, self-check-in is a time to just reflect and to ground yourself and ask yourself a couple questions, see how you're doing. So wherever you are, just take a nice deep inhale through your nose, fill up your lungs, lots of goodness, lots of love into your beautiful body. And then exhale, just sign, letting go of any tension, negativity, release it with your breath. I want you to ask yourself on a scale of one to 10, 10 being amazing, one being not so great, how are you doing today? Get real with yourself here. And now follow that up with a question of why do I feel the way I feel? Maybe something happened, maybe nothing happened. Just getting honest and real with yourself. And now I want you to ask yourself, what is something that I love about my life? Gratitude is the best attitude, even on the not so great days. And it's important to find reasons to be thankful. All right, now I want you to ask yourself, have I hydrated my hot bod in the past 30 minutes? You know the drill. Grab your water, take a sip, hydrate your hot bod, and resume. Hydration is key to success, obviously. And now, ask yourself, have I stood up in the past 60 minutes? If you have not, stand up, shake out the legs, shake out the arms, get the blood flowing, and sit back down. Just so you guys know, I sold my desk. I bought a standing desk, and now I have my walking pad under it. It is so key for making sure I'm not sitting down all day. So FYI, if you work from home or you study from home, it's like a game changer. Okay, next question. I want you to ask yourself, what is something that is currently not so amazing in my life? A struggle. What are you struggling with? And now I want you to think about how can I turn my struggle into my strength? I have said it before, we truly do grow through our seasons that are difficult and are not the easiest. So think about one way you're going to grow. It's going to turn into a strength during this season or whatever struggle you're going through. Last question, I want you to tell yourself an affirmation, something you love about you. It can be, I am perseverant, I am driven, I am beautiful. Just say it out loud. Cool. I hope you're feeling checked in. I hope you're feeling amazing. So good. Quick update because this episode is so freaking fun, you guys. I was just in Colorado. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you probably didn't already know this. Go follow me if you don't. The Instagram for the podcast is Healthy But Human Pod. My main Instagram, though, where I post a lot of health and wellness stuff and lifestyle is I'm sweaty and I know it. So I was just in Colorado. I was at this podcast conference. It's really huge. It's called Podcast Movement. It was in Denver and I'd never been before. I was very new. I didn't really know anyone, but it was super cool because I was looking at the speakers for this event and I saw my friend Lily was going to be speaking at it. So Lily has been on the podcast before a couple months ago and we never actually met in person, but we immediately hit it off and we were like, we have to meet in person because like we know we'd be friends. So anyways, I text Lily. I'm like, Lily, you're at this conference. Are you serious? And she was about to get on the plane and she's like, yes, I'm getting there at midnight. So we end up meeting up the next day for coffee and we instantly just, you know, when you meet someone and it's just like an instant friend, it's like, you can talk about anything and it's not weird, like mega TMI stuff. It was that way. And we were having, <laughs> you guys, we were having a full blown conversation about the spiritual realm in Christianity on the floor of this hotel. And I think that people walking by, heads were turning. We were having this like full blown conversation about like all the things angels, demonic, everything, all the jazz. And so <laughs> the Holy Spirit. 
if you would have a conversation like that with me in the hotel on the floor at a conference, we'd be friends. Anyways, that's my love language. I love talking about that stuff. I feel like I haven't talked too much about the spiritual realm on the podcast. I mean, we've we've eased into talking about faith and you guys have been soaking it in, loving it. And so we'll definitely have more conversations about all the things faith related. But if you have any specific questions, please DM me because I love answering your DMs. And I also seriously take them to heart for when I talk about things on the episodes. Anyways, me and Lily became instant friends and we basically went around this conference just networking listening to super cool panels and topics all the things podcast I feel really really inspired I've just been feeling kind of stagnant for the past like year or so and I feel like I have so many fresh ideas I'm really amped up and I can't wait for everything that's to come with the podcast and my Pilates studio on all the things anyways other updates after the conference ended, John, my husband and I, we went to Breckenridge to visit his family who were there for, they were there for like the month in the state rented out a condo. And so we went there, we went hiking. It was so cool because, so his parents had rented a Jeep and we went off-roading on the Jeep up to this. So basically we drove <laughs> off-road on this trail you can drive on for like, I don't even know how many feet. We got up to like 10,000 feet or something. And then we hiked the rest and we were, it was a summit hike. So we were walking along the ridge of this mountain, like hiking up it. It was so surreal because you could see down on both sides and it was just like, we were on the top of the mountain. It was definitely very hard to breathe, but it was great. I loved it. Did not see any mountain goats, sadly, but so worth it. The views were great. And then we flew home and I feel like I've just been... Oh, just like in recovery mode. I don't know. I feel very tired. And you know, when your mind just like kind of in a blur fog, you're just like, you just been on a trip and you get home and you're like, where do I even start? I feel like that right now, but it's okay. We're going to, we're going to get back into routine. I feel like taking it day by day. And that's my advice for you. If you're getting back into routine and you just feel discouraged, don't worry. You will get there. We're doing it together day by day. Let's do the thing. Anyways, you guys, quick announcement before we get into our episode with Lily, because we recorded this in person. It's going to be such a freaking amazing episode, you guys. I'm excited. It's fun. We're, we're like laughing a bunch, but quick announcement. I have a Pilates challenge launching on September 1st, so that's in several days. It's Pilates Time Strength Challenge, blending lifting and heavy weights with Pilates. You guys, it is my new favorite style of of workout like it is such a fun workout and my body feels incredible after I do this class you guys are gonna love the challenge it's 28 days you can join at sweaty studio and I'll put the link to join below and you can get a little a little discount I'm gonna offer everyone a free month you heard it first so you can get a free month below I will link it in the show notes and definitely take advantage of that because this challenge is gonna be really fun and I don't want you to miss out Anyways, time for our episode. You guys, let's learn all things gut health, wellness routine tips in college, in postgrad, whatever season of life you're in. This episode is for you. So we answer a little Q&A at the end and we have just a chit chat kind of, you know, conversation, bestie conversation. As sad as I am to see our summer chapter coming to a close, I'm super pumped for fall. When I think of fall, I think of cozy jazz music, yummy smelling candles, and all things new routines in our personal and professional lives. One routine that I'm 100% continuing that I started this past summer is using Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit to help me stay fueled and sharp during the busiest days. With Factor, you can fuel up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian-approved, ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. Plus, if you tend to get tired of eating the same old chicken and rice bowl every single night and need new recipes to try, with Factor, you can get to choose from 34 plus weekly flavor-packed dietitian-approved meals that are ready to eat in two minutes. They're the perfect quick lunch choice for my besties who only have a little fridge and microwave at their office, or for my gals who live in a dorm and don't have a kitchen, or for my queens who simply don't have the time or energy to cook a full-blown meal that is me plus factor saves you the extra trip to the store and the messy chopping prepping and cleaning up too while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need head to factormeals.com slash calipod 
50 and use code CaliPod50 to get 50% off. That's code CaliPod50 at factormeals.com slash CaliPod50 to get 50% off. And you spell Cali, C-A-L-L-I-E, pod 50. Go check it out. With the heat waves we're experiencing this summer, especially here in South Florida, it can be hard to stay fresh while you're out and about. That's why I've incorporated the honey pots, foaming wash, and wipes into my daily routine. One of the best feelings is at the end of the day after I've gotten back from my ocean sunset swim and I hop into the shower and I use the honey pots foaming vulva wash because it's gentle and effective and it's just exactly what my most sensitive parts need and it just feels so good to be clean afterwards. You already know I basically live in a bikini or biker shorts and I spend most of my time being a mermaid in the ocean or getting my workout session. So to stay fresh, I actually started carrying around the sensitive honey pot wipes in my bag at all times for a quick refresh and it is truly such a game changer. Both the foaming wash and wipes are plant-derived, backed by science, dermatologist-approved, gynecologist-approved, and hypoallergenic. I've seriously been using the Honey Pop for years now, and their products are seriously lifesavers for my girlies out there who love to stay fresh, but also love a good sweat sash. Get 25% off your first order from thehoneypot.co slash summer. That's T-H-E-H-O-N-E-Y-P-O-T dot co slash summer to get 25 percent off your first order and join the hive today all right welcome lily to the podcast so pumped to be here welcome back it's your second time thanks cali yeah i'm super pumped to be here okay so for anyone who hasn't listened to our episode with you on it before tell everyone who you are where you're from and all about you so my name is Lily. I am the host of 8020. If you guys listen to Callie's podcast, I am sure you probably may have heard of mine, but if not, it's available anywhere you get your podcasts. It's called 8020 and it's just 420 somethings, health and wellness related. Callie and I talk about a lot of like similar topics, I feel like. So we're very aligned in that sense. Um, I'm from Maryland and yeah, I feel like in a nutshell, that's kind of about me. Yeah. It's so crazy because for anyone listening, so basically we're actually recording this in person. But anyways, this is so crazy. We have to tell the story about like how we're in person together. Basically, there's this move or not move. It's not a movement. It's a so, movement. Okay, wait, this is funny. Someone asked me. Someone goes, so how's your movement? <laughs> <laughs> and automatically my head went to like, like, you know, like making a movement. Like, you know, when you like go to the bathroom, that's I was what I thought. Yeah. Like and I was like, bowel movement. no, that's, exactly, that's where my brain went. And I was like, how's my movement? Oh, how's my podcast? Movement? It's going really well. Yeah. I've thank been, you. I've been really, my, I've been really regular. <laughs> my digestion's actually been really messed up this whole trip i've been eating so many salads and they've been like me no up. literally yeah but then i feel like i need a vegetable because i've been traveling for so long so i'm like okay well i no. need a veggie but then the salad is gonna like you know uh, wait yeah. i tell you an embarrassing story okay i love an embarrassing story <laughs> okay so we'll explain what we're at later but basically i was doing john and i we were doing this like one of the brain dates where we had like a bunch of people just in a circle at the table to learn more about like tiktok and all that stuff so I just eaten the salad that you ate today with the, the barbecue beef and all of a sudden my oh stomach no. is like, it just started. My stomach is like churning and I'm like, no, oh no. no. And I had to like kind of look at John and I was like, I need to, I need to like step out for a second. And I, my stomach was so sick. Oh my god! And then I came back and I was talking to one of the girls after, and again I was like, "Oh no, I have to end this conversation, or else I gotta go." <laughs> okay, that's honestly become a very real fear of mine. And I'm like, no. like okay, so I saw this. Um, I don't know if you saw this on Instagram. I, like, this is kind of gross to talk about, but whatever. I saw this reel, and it was this guy who was on like one of those like naked and afraid type shows. Yeah, but he. I'll have to show it to you. But he was talking about how, like, he, I guess he, like, had to, like, catch fish in the river or something. But then, then he went on and on about how, like, he basically, like, went to the bathroom in his sleeping bag and how he was, like, like, the quote is really funny. He was, like, I was naked in my sleeping bag. I don't think it was the fish. <laughs> really, really funny. I'll have to show it to you later. But literally, ever since watching that, it's a very, very real fear of mine. Yeah. I yeah. have a story I've never, I don't think I've ever shared this on the pod. 
I pooped my pants once in college. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's horrible. It's like one of my most traumatic stories. Okay, well, you, I, I kind of want to hear about I it. I can tell it to you. Yeah. Okay. Everyone gets to know now <laughs> all the <about> vulnerability <laughs> in this conference we're at. Everyone's like, you have to be so vulnerable in your podcast. And I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> let me tell you about this. I time. share like my deepest <laughs> secrets on here. I'm like, let me tell you about this. The Super. most embarrassing story ever. <laughs> so I was in college and anyone who goes to university in Miami knows there's a Pura Vida there. I love Pura Vida. It's this, like really yummy, healthy, organic cafe thing. And they had opened one that was right by like the cal- all the classes and stuff. It was super, it was amazing. It was on campus. All my money went to Pura Vida. I love them. So I got their Caesar salad. It was like a vegan Caesar salad. It was kale and I was eating it. I had like tofu or whatever. And then I'm getting in my car. I'm driving home. I lived like five minutes off campus. All of a sudden I got like, my stomach was doing the churn, <laughs> the terrifying churn that like haunts me. And I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm going to literally poop myself right now. I was like so close to my apartment and I, I pulled into the parking garage. I lived on like the 10th floor and the elevators were really slow. And I was like, you know what? I have this option. I either can run downstairs to the lobby, go in the bathroom there, or I can like wait in hopes the elevator makes in time. I picked the lobby (laughs) as as I'm (laughs) so gross as I'm running across the lobby. Yet. Oh no! Hallie, oh, no! And then I go to the bathroom and I'm like covered in my own poop, and I'm just like everyone at my school lives in this apartment, and I'm like if I see <laughs> someone and I'm covered in poop, right now, I'm gonna die. Wait, so what'd you do? How'd you recover? Oh my gosh, this was this was a god moment, the miracle. Okay, every time I'd go in the elevator, there was someone I knew. Somehow I get in the elevator, covered in my own poop. <laughs> I make it to the top floor, no stops. And then unfortunately, as I got off the elevator, this dad and his son got on and I was like, I'm so sorry. I was thinking, I'm so sorry. It's disgusting. (laughs) Anyways, I went back and cleaned up my poop. Oh, were people in the lobby? Somehow there was no one there. Like that was, that was like, I was protected. I was protected from a lot of horrible embarrassment. But anyways, I got food poisoning. That's what happened. I just, I determined. And then I was teaching a fitness class and I had to tell my boss that I (laughs) got food poisoning and I couldn't go. Okay. That's how fast food poisoning happens. It was awful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I don't know if it was that or if it's just like really fibrous because sometimes salads do that to me, but especially the kale sometimes yeah goodness wow (laughs) well i'm glad that no one was in the lobby could you imagine dude you got really lucky die like how embarrassing to walk out of the bathroom see someone you know from class covered (laughs) 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 what were you wearing oh my gosh not to get into like like, the dirty details like like a denim skirt thing oh short skirt and it was disgusting Thankfully, I cleaned it up, but it was horrible. Yeah. Goodness. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm I'm glad that you know it builds character. You it know, does. it does. I feel like I don't talk about that enough on this podcast. Like I've genuinely thought I had IBS for so long. I don't somehow, but I have so many embarrassing poop stories, and I never talk about it. But well, so okay, so I also would say I used to have tummy issues, like a lot worse than I do now. Like I feel like I'm a lot better, but. I think a lot of like gut issues go just like unrecognized, you know, is it possible to, and I don't know, I'm just, I'm asking a genuine question, but like, is it possible to like have IBS for like a short period of time? Like, does it ever go away? I don't know. know, Cause there was a time in my life where like I did keto for a month and it like effed up my stomach. Like literally I would eat anything and I had like diarrhea. It was yeah. so bad. And I went to the gastro cause I was like, I couldn't eat food. It was awful. They ran all these tests on me, everything. I was convinced I had IBS. They were like, we don't see anything. Wow. Which is so not true because it's like, obviously there's a problem. And yeah. they, literally the way that I re like fix my stomach is, do you remember food combining when that yeah. was a whole thing? Mm-hmm. I did that and I was eating plant-based and it reset itself. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So I have kind of a similar story. I also did food combining. I feel like, who didn't do food combining? I feel like combining? all the girls did food combining. Everyone did food combining <laughs> and I didn't mind it. Like I think Ayurveda is so interesting. Mm-hmm. And so like that kind of way of eating, if it works for you, like that's cool, but it's also like, you know, I think it, 
it, it took me into like a pattern of like worrying too much about what I was eating. Then eventually I went completely vegan and that really messed with my stomach. I went vegan too. After really? food. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like that was like the natural like path that people follow. But then I got to a point where like I cared too much about what I ate. Yeah. And part of me thinks that like it's mental. To oh, some like degree. stomach stuff? Yeah. I think like... I always joke about this. John this morning was like, I kind of like don't feel well. And I was like, it's a mental, it's all it's in all your mental. head. But I mean, to an extent, but uh, yeah, I think exp- I've, oh my gosh, the stomach stuff. It is so mental because like most of the time it, I've, I find my mind makes it way worse than it is because so, like I said, sometimes it still happens to me. I'll eat something and then I'm like, if I'm somewhere, this is so crazy. If I know I don't have a bathroom nearby, I like get anxiety about it. Okay, me too. It makes it worse. Me too, 100%. And then the stress and the anxiety and make, makes your yes. stomach feel like it's turning even more. Absolutely. So this happened to me on my road trip this past fall. I was in Arizona. There was no restrooms inside. I was freaking out. I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot poop myself in my car with John right next to me. That's disgusting. Anyway, <laughs> we're also very open about this, like me and John. So I was, to- I was telling him what was going on. I was like panicking. But I learned this breath where you inhale through your nose you keep your mouth shut as you exhale. It's called like, I think it's ocean breathing. You exhale and the breath go over the back of your throat. So I'll like demonstrate it. So you sound like you're almost growling. Is it, um, uh, oh, what's it called? In yoga, it's called something. Oh my gosh, I should know this. There's a name for it. Um, I don't know. I think it's ocean uh, breath. But there's no other name. Oh, what's the name? I should know this. I did a whole teacher training. Oh, I feel like such a bad, I, I don't teach, but like I, yeah. Um, oh gosh, what's it called? Ujjayi breath. I think it's, I think it's that. Yeah. But yeah. It is the only thing that works for me. Like it calms my stomach down like nothing else. Wow. But it makes me not feel anxious. Like that's what it does. It helps mm. with anxiety and stress. Interesting. And it actually works crazy i love that yeah i think like um well pranayama is one of the it's like breath work um like one of the like limbs of yoga and i truly believe that like finding little breathing techniques is like huge for the program or like box breathing i love box oh my gosh that's so good diaphragmatic breath is also so good too yeah it's huge i didn't realize though that that would help with um like digestion yeah that's interesting. Have you ever I'll done it? Try it? Oh, diaphragmatic or the ocean one? I don't know either of them. I haven't thought about like correlating it to digestion, but that's super cool. They both are so, I would say diaphragmatic is basically like if I feel like my stomach is really gassy or it's like having stomach pains or something, I'll do it. And I find that it makes my stomach definitely release a lot of like pressure inside of it. And the pain goes away a lot better. I'll usually pair that with like different stretches that are really good for relieving gas and stuff and that is amazing do you ever do legs up a wall like literally last night I recorded my whole podcast it was only like a 15 minute or but I literally laid right there on the floor with my legs up a wall and How I just sat there with the mic record a podcast with your legs on a wall I literally I just laid there and I just talked it was it, I don't think I don't think I sounded funny but um but yeah I just like laid there with my legs up a wall and that's I a wellness I got a multitask when I was feeling kind of bloated like I had had a glass of wine too and like I, and I had like a chicken sandwich for dinner so it was like a little bit of bread a little bit of wine I was like all right I need to do like legs up a wall I gotta deep a little, like, little bit girl yeah you're testing me right now <laughs> yeah and I was like okay I could sit here or I could sit with my legs up a wall I'll do that too like if I just want to like scroll Instagram or like sit there and like respond to DMs I'll just like lay with my legs up a wall it's so good reverse yeah. some blood flow yeah yeah it's good stuff it's good stuff good stuff I love it do you have any embarrassing digestion stories oh embarrassing digestive stories um one that I'm thinking of is actually it's not my story but <laughs> actually I've got a lot of stories that pertain to other people <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to share my best friend's most my embarrassing best friend's, story. Um, I've got one friend um, and let's just say he was doing some swimming and, but he was, he was in a wetsuit and um, he, this is pretty recent actually. And he shared this with me just kind of more of a joke, more of a joke. Cause I asked him like funny stories from like his, you know, his life. He's like, well, um, I actually, um, you know, the, the currents, you know, coming up, whatever, they were bringing like polluted water to like where he was like, um, surfing and he was like yeah and so you know I was like drinking this you know polluted water and then I just you know pooped myself in my wetsuit <gasps> but you're in a wetsuit oh so yeah you're kind of you're in a, a sticky situation That's, mm. yeah but I don't think I've ever like actually I can't think 
Uh, one time, like on the playground when I was little, but I feel like every kid has like a mishap. <laughs> like, every kid has a mishap on the playground. Um, but yeah, nothing, nothing of late. That's no. good. I'll keep you posted. I hope it stays away for you. <laughs> Honestly, same. I hope you never have to endure an embarrassing um, poop story. No. Okay. But I feel like everyone has one or knows someone. I feel like, I feel like no one talks about it. And like, this is where I realize I'm not alone. Cause I like literally have conversations like this. And then like most people I talk to are like, oh yeah, it happens to me all the time. Whenever I'm in that situation where I feel like I'm about to poop my pants, I feel like I'm in, I'm alone. And I'm like, no one struggles with this, but me. And yeah. I feel like so many people do. Yeah. And I think, you know, no one really talks. I mean, gut health is definitely something like people are talking more and more about, but even just like digestive issues or like anxiety around your digestive system. Yeah. That's something I think we need to talk more about, you know? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I just kind of like thought about Do you have any, that. any thoughts about that? I don't know. It just, yeah. I mean, I love your breath work tip. I thought that that was really cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, I used to be like, okay, so I lived in a sorority house. And what so, sorority were you in? Um, I was in Alpha Chi. Oh, nice. Yeah. And um, I lived in a sorority house, but everyone was kind of judgy. And so like, obviously like you go to the bathroom <laughs> And people will like literally say in the group chat, like who's having digestive problems or yeah, literally. Yeah. No, they didn't. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Or not like, you know, not like the mass sorority group, but like people like send stuff to their friends. Like, Oh, like someone's having an issue. Um, (laughs) and I'm like, and I I would always take it personally, not, you know, you know, cause I'm like, I mean, I don't know if it's me, but maybe (laughs) (laughs) it could be, but anyway, normalize, um, normalize doing what you need to do you know in my college dorm we had this person that would I don't I still to this day have a zero idea who it was who did this but there was someone that would literally go into our showers and take a dump in our shower and (laughs) and in our group chat we'd be like this we called them the cereal shitter. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, the cereal shitter strikes again. That's hilarious. We think it was a boy from the floor below us, though. Was it a girl's bathroom, though? So it was basically like our dorm went guy floor, girl floor, guy oh. floor. And we don't know who it was. How weird, though. I know. Like, just do it the normal way. I feel like someone was trying to prank us. So that's why we're like, maybe it's a guy. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. I, I, girls wouldn't think to do that. I know. I feel like that's such a guy thing to do. That's a very like, much ha-ha. Ha-ha. <laughs> No, literally. <laughs> literally. Yeah. Yeah. So weird. Boys are weird. Do you have any tips for helping someone with their digestion? Um, I would say, okay, legs up a wall. Really helpful for me. Um, I also think um, taking digestive enzymes has been really I huge love, for me. Like the papayas. Do you take those? No. Which ones do you take? No, I take um plantzyme. I think that's what it's called. I forget, but um that's like the name of the thing. But I forget what the actual supplement's called. Um my mom's the best. She literally will like order us supplements and be like because she's like really big on like podcasts like big like andrew andrew huberman like so she listens to all these wellness podcasts so she's always like with like the latest trends so she'll literally like ship supplements to our house and send us a text and be like okay you need to take two of these a day you know for you know vitamin d equals happiness you know just like stuff like that she's the cutest happiness she's so cute so digestive enzymes huge for me also just like lemon water if i'm feeling like bloated i'll just do lemon water but also knowing like when to stop drinking stuff you know, like this mm-hmm. morning I woke up and I felt really full. And once again, you know, that pertained to like last night, just like having like a big day of like food that I normally don't eat. And also that's just kind of traveling. But, um, you know, I normally would drink coffee, AG1 and like a full thing of water. But this morning I was like, okay, if I drink anything, I'm just going to feel so much more, you know, like nasty. Yeah. And so I just stuck with water. Like I was just like, I'll just keep it simple and drink water, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love lemon water. When I was like in my big food combining era of life is my first did hot lemon water in the morning. First thing I drink it with my like French press coffee, got things going. It was great. Love lemon water. It's the best. <laughs> it's so good. I think also, have you ever tried like rubbing peppermint oil on your stomach? No. Tell me more. Oh my gosh. It's insane. So this is like, it's kind of sketch because on the packaging of peppermint oil, I get it at Whole Foods. It's like, don't put this on your skin. I mean, I've never had any issues, but... Because it's like minty. Does it like tingle a little bit? Yeah. Like if I put it on my like eyelids, it does burn. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I try not to get in my eyes, but I've never had any really negative side effects from it. It, Okay, I'll have to try that. Yeah. It's crazy though. Like I will, if I'm having stomach pain or my stomach feels sick or whatever, I'll put it on my stomach and just like rub it around and it helps 
so much. Okay, I'll have to try that. Do you have a um, a specific brand that you recommend? I think I just use the Whole Foods one. Okay. It's kind of like a dropper. Nice. Okay. It's supposed to be essential oils, but it's not like this tiny container of it where you put it into a diffuser. It's more of like a little Like drop a dropper thing? thing? Yeah. Okay, I think yeah. I know what you're talking about. I feel like I can like picture the section. Yeah. yeah. That's one of my favorite little hacks. And then I think the deep breathing has been definitely something that's helped a lot. Because I really do think, like, I don't know, thinking about like, as a little kid, when I would feel like I was going to throw up, I felt like I got so anxious about it and it made it worse. So yeah. I really feel like breathing and trying to calm yourself down when your stomach hurts is something that can help a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's cool how the brain's like correlated to the stomach. It is. They're all connected. It's crazy. What's your favorite wellness hack? Oh, of like all time. Yeah. Um, favorite wellness hack of all time. I love... Um, a cold shower or like anything cold so mm. I I feel like I'm the type of person that I'm like naturally kind of warm and like even like if someone sleeps next to me like like my sister was sleeping next to me like when we were um, in Southern California together and she literally was like Lily you are radiating so much heat like I cannot do this like <laughs> like get away from me like you're just so like you just put off so much heat or, like I was always the type of person in high school like if someone would sit down in the chair after me it would be super warm and they'd be like this chair is so warm and I'm like what do you want me to do about it I was sitting here for 90 minutes <laughs> like, <laughs> you know and they're like this chair is <laughs> ew this chair is so warm <laughs> like you, you know exactly what I'm talking about I was the chair warmer <laughs> that was me guilty she was the chair warmer <laughs> was the chair warmer um <laughs> so funny but but yeah and so I'm just naturally really hot so like a cold shower is great like if I work out in the morning I'll always do a cold shower after um or ice rolling is really really cool I used too. to be a big ice roller love ice rolling that was like when I would drink and go out and be super hungover the next day that was my favorite thing to do if I had a raging headache because I had to ice roll my forehead it's so good for it's inflammation so good. It's, it just feels so good like I might even take a cold shower later just because I'm like talking about it now like just like it just feels so good and then there's now now there's research about um cold plunges and like I, I can't even give you the stats because I'd probably butcher it but like <laughs> two hours after your cold plunge like you're still feeling that um like dopamine hit really yeah so it's it's like elongated like dopamine or endorphin release I I don't know all the facts don't call me there but it, it's tons of good benefits have you heard of that I think it's like the ice guy or ice man on tiktok no I heard about him last night for the first time I haven't looked at his account but we were talking about this yesterday because so John is like super into cold showers now he have you heard of David Goggins yes yeah he's a big David Goggins lover and he's gotten into the cold shower habit and he was complaining he's like you know I felt like the water in Colorado would be way colder because of the glacier water it really just was like letting me down and so he was talking about the ice guy yesterday with his friend Josh and apparently this guy would like literally go swimming swimming pools of ice Whoa. <laughs> that his thing. wait that's so interesting although i like a cold plunge is so good for you like for, like i've got friends that have like true like ice baths and they'll do like you know put like one of those big bags of ice and, like john does hose. that i like do you guys have a house are yeah. you in a house yeah. okay so then can you do like a full like ice bath yeah i've never done it though <laughs> he does it though he'll like go to the gas station and get like massive bags of ice when I he was in that. his he'd run he was running a ton like 13 plus miles and he would go to the gas station wall on his run this is crazy <laughs> he'd get his ice bag run with it all the no way, way home he was he's hardcore that's awesome yeah he would put it in the bathtub then and like put i guess some water in it and then soak in the ice how long would he do it for i don't know that's always like my like I'm always interested to figure out like how long people can last in the ice I did um I wanted to do it when I was in California but the weather wasn't that bad wasn't that great just because the ocean's like or I guess it it was raining like there were storms and stuff but the ocean is like the perfect temperature for a cold plunge Mm. in California and so um I kind of replicated that in the winter time on the east coast um in Ocean City did you swim in the ocean oh yeah it was 45 degrees (laughs) And so I jumped in. I think I made it two and a half minutes. Oh my god! But I was freezing. And I was in like leggings and a bra. Like I just done like a run on the beach. And then I, yeah, I literally just, and my friend dared me too. And like, I'm the type of person where like, if you double dog dare me, I'm going to do it. <laughs> you can't say no to a double dog no, dare. No, I can't say no to a double dog dare. And so that's actually one of the, um, well, not one of, but I had been planning to leave my job for a while. Not a while. I mean, you know, I just, I'll give you guys the skinny. Anyway. Long story short, my friend was like, a double dog dare you, like, you won't. And I was like, 
for leaving your job yes and I was like watch me because it, it was something because it, it was something that I was talking about for a long time and like the podcast was picking yeah. up and you know there's so many different factors and we had talked about this kind of you know a little bit at the conference and yeah. just you know personal stuff that I, I don't think that is you know I don't think it's meant to be online you know so there's you know more reasons than just a double dog dare but that was kind of the one thing where I was like you know what watch me you know and kind of and and to some degree too like there were a lot of people in my life that were telling me like oh you can't do it like you can't you know live life without live life outside of the normal template and I kind of wanted to be like okay watch me yeah like proving them wrong proving them wrong overcoming fear and doubt absolutely yeah that's awesome yeah I love how we're gonna record an entire episode on college routines and then we (laughs) (laughs) digestion it always goes that way digestion and double dog dares Uh, before we go I want to ask a couple questions because I do it I did we'll stick in like the healthy wellness realm of questions um so one of the questions one of my followers asked me was how do you keep in a healthy mindset like do you ever have really bad days so do you have any tips for how to get out of it gets a bad day or a funk yeah absolutely bad days are normal you know I think that we start to beat ourselves up over having a bad day you know oh like I can't feel sad you know I'm a happy person but you have to kind of just like go with the the highs you know you're gonna have high highs and you're gonna have low lows I love the idea that and you can feel free to chime in here like if you've never felt a low low you don't know what true happiness feels like and then if you've never felt true happiness then you can't be grateful for like you know, or you can't accept like the low lows. Does that, does that make sense at all? I don't yeah. Know. I think sometimes when I've looking back, when I've gone through the toughest seasons of my life where every day felt like a bad day, it made me, when I got out of that season, I look back and I'm just like, wow, I am so thankful to where I am today. And I feel like I have that, like what you're saying, a different perspective on it because I have been in such a pit of sadness and bad days, but yeah, it's just every, it, I mean, especially as a female, we just, our hormones are changing so much. I mean, we have to give ourselves grace. Like I have weeks where I feel like I'm mad at everything. The week leading up to my period, I am so sad. My life is in shambles. Everything's a mess. Every, I like, I, I dislike everyone. It, no, it really is. And then after my period, you know, two days in, I'm like, okay, I'm feeling okay. And then by the time my period's over, like energy's up again. And so I think just like monitoring like where you're at and being okay with, you know, this is just how I'm feeling today and I'm going to get through it. And then also not like neglecting the things that make you feel good. For mm-hmm. me, that's a workout. When I'm sad, the last thing I want to do is like put on workout clothes and like go listen to like, you know, fun, exciting music yeah. and go work out. But that is always the one thing that makes me feel good. And I've never had a workout where I walk away from it feeling worse. Yeah, that's so true. And I feel like I always say this, but I find that I resist the things I need the most. So a hundred percent. Yeah. I'll look at that. And I'm like, mm, I'm really resisting being social right now. Or I'm really resisting going and working out. Or I'm really resisting cooking myself a meal of nourishing foods. It's usually what I need the most. No, exactly. Which yeah. is so wild. And also just touching on the hormone thing. If anyone's wondering how to track your cycle, I do have some episodes on cycle syncing. So those have all the, all the tips on that. Yeah. You're the one that definitely put me on like cycle tracking and just kind of navigating like you know where you're at in your cycle and then how that impacts almost everything else in your life and then even how like that impacts the way that other people interact with you too Mm -hmm. if the people around you know that okay you're in you know you're about to start your period they can be you know gentler on you or if they know that you're ovulating like you know then it's time to like go out with your friends and have a good time so um, you know, like my sister and I live together and so we're pretty much synced, but sometimes we're not. And it's important for us to know like where the other's at. So we know how to like treat the other yeah. to some degree. Even in like with me and John, he knows my cycle so well. I'm like, Hey, I'm about to have my luteal phase and it's the week before my period. And I know myself really well. And I know that I get very frustrated and easily irritated. So just heads up. And that's been really good for us. Yeah. And that's it just like, it's almost like taking a personality test. You yeah. know, it's like just one of those additional tools that you can help to understand that you can use to help understand yourself and the world around you, you know? Mm-hmm. And it, it just helped me a lot with giving myself more grace. Cause I'd be so mean to myself about having lower energy or not feeling so social. And now I'm really able to see how my cycle does affect the ebbs and flows of energy. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Moving on. Mm, let's do a couple more questions. Let's see. Your number one morning and night routine tips that you can't go without. Oh, morning routine. 
Um, definitely just like my quiet time in the morning, like journaling, reading a mm-hmm. devotion, um, worship music, or even just like peaceful meditation music. It's just like, whether it's like birds chirping or like little like guitar strums, just like something low key. Like I'm definitely the type of person that thrives. I feel like I do my best in a very like peaceful, relaxed environment. And so starting my day by like rolling out of bed and like pounding a cup of coffee, like never worked. Um, and <laughs> the work hard, play hard grind mode. Yeah, no, it never works for me. <laughs> like, I mean, I have people in my life that are like, so like grind, 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 like, you know, get up and go and do all this yeah. stuff. And, you know, they're like drinking their protein shakes and pounding their coffee and that just like never worked. So being okay with like, you know, wanting to start my day on a slow note. I love a slow morning. Love oh, a slow morning. So good. And like waking up and like going right to a workout class is like, is, it's okay, but like, I don't love that. I know? heard this thing where it's important. So when we wake up, cortisol spikes wake us up. Like that's what wakes us up without an alarm. If you naturally wake up, it's like a cortisol spike. And then you want to, like you want that cortisol level to go back down okay so like I think I think it was talking about coffee how it's really important to wait to drink coffee because you want to make sure that cortisol goes down 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 back to normal level and then you continue on and then you have coffee a little bit later interesting so I mean I can even see that with if you go to like a high intense intensity workout right out of the gates you chug your coffee your pre-workout that cortisol level could stay pretty high wait okay that makes so much sense yeah, because when I was like working my nine to five, I would literally go to the gym, do a tough workout, hit the showers, hit a coffee shop, and then go right into work. So it's like the cortisol, like literally climbing, climbing, climbing. Yeah. And then it's just a stressful day because all I've done is stress my body out. Well, I was listening to the Huberman Lab podcast and he was talking about even after a workout, it's important to lower your cortisol levels. So doing some deep breathing in the car once you leave the gym or the studio or whatever, he's like, that's really important to do for your body because your cortisol does increase when you're working out. That I was a really that. interesting episode. That's super, which episode was that? It was, I don't know, I don't know the exact title, but I think it was his fitness tips, like his okay. top fitness tips. Okay, I'll have to listen. It was a little solo episode. A good like little travel travel entertainment for oh my gosh. tomorrow it was so interesting i learned okay. a lot i love how like in-depth and research oriented his i feel like i'm in cl- i feel like i'm in college i yeah. love it <laughs> it's awesome yeah okay yeah. let's let's see um i guess i'll answer the question really fast the morning and night routine i'm, I'm literally the same way my quiet time everything I love it. Having like a good reading the Bible, listening to some soaking music, sitting outside, getting sunshine. Oh, sitting outside. Huge. Oh my gosh. Big win. I love it. Sometimes I'll go on a walk first thing with like no headphones in. I'll just walk and enjoy if I wake up with the sunrise. That's the best. Oh, it's great. I'll go on like a little prayer walk and I'll just talk to God. I'm like, hey God, good morning. Love it. (laughs) I love it. Um, And then night routine, I think. Just, I love to read. I've been reading books lately. Me too. Like some good fiction. Yes. um, What's been your favorite so far this summer? Mm, I'm reading one... I like don't even know what the book I'm reading is called. I think it's like summer read or something. It's one of those just like rom romance beach read books. I love Beach Read by Emily Henry. All her okay. books are so good. Okay, I'll have to look into it. What about you? Um, I just read one. It was called In Five Years. Mm. And it was just one of those like, you know, when you walk into Barnes and Noble and it's like good little beach reads. Yeah. So it was one of those. And then right now I'm reading one called The Invisible Husband of Frick Island. And it's, yeah, it's pretty good. It's like, just like a beachy, like easy read. Um, the author based it in like a, it's like a fake island. Cause I mean, it's a fiction novel, but, um, she based it in like a fake island off of, um, the Chesapeake Bay. So like, I, like she's talking about things that like relate to me because I grew up in that area. So it's, um, it's just, it's super intriguing. It's cute. So I'll have to yeah. look at that one as well. Yeah. I feel like I need a good book. The one I'm reading right now, I'm not obsessed with it, but it's still pretty good okay final question of the day Mm, okay this is a good one how to deal with stress and anxiety in college oh oh I feel like I could do I could go in so in depth (laughs) here how to deal with stress and anxiety in college so when I was a college freshman I feel like just there's so much going on and so much happening that it's really hard to I guess just like navigate life like it's so much change all at once and it's terrifying and um when I started college I think a big like source of anxiety for me was the friendships yeah or the lack thereof 
Um, and then a big stressor for me was just the academic workload. Like high school did not prepare me in the slightest for the academic workload of college. And so I definitely related or relate to like trying to figure out how to deal with stress and anxiety. But something that was non-negotiable for me was working out just hands down. I would, we had a really nice gym and it was like directly across from my freshman dorm, which was like so nice. <laughs> we have such parallel lives. Know, it's, it's so crazy. crazy. So crazy. Um, but yeah, working out was huge. And then, um, what else? I guess just like trying to find like little ways to decompress and knowing that like, you don't have to go out all the time. The drinking culture in college indu- like induced so much anxiety in mm-hmm. me. Um, cause like, you know, it was customary to work hard all week, play really, really hard on the weekends, Sunday, fun day. And then you're spending your afternoon doing your homework and then you're just doing it all over again. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I feel like I wish I had better tools in college to deal with stress and anxiety, but I kind of let it dictate my life if we're being completely honest. Same. Yeah. Looking back, like what would you tell yourself? Um, I would say just like relax, like slow down, um, know that you don't have to involve yourself in the party culture if you don't want to um and then also just like make a priority to make friends because yeah. I don't think that I had a true support system in college um we talked about this a little bit at lunch and I think we're going to talk like relationships on on my podcast yeah so episode. go listen to her episode after this or if you already listened to it listen to it again yeah <laughs> listen a second <laughs> um but yeah I think like I really I started dating a guy like right out of the gate when I got to college and something that I always wish I did different was just like put like you you know you can still be dating someone and also make friends but it's hard to involve yourself in a new relationship and put energy into that and then simultaneously put energy into new friendships I feel like you can't really do both Mm -hmm. and I mean maybe someone had it figured out I know I definitely didn't um and granted like I was 18 at the time like you're fresh out of high school like there's so much change but I really just wish that I spent more time like building up a good friend group rather than like worrying about dating yeah I'm the same way I feel like I in college felt like a lone wolf so for so much of it because I was also in a serious relationship and I spent all my time with the guy I was dating and I lost my entire friend group on my freshman year floor so that was really tough to navigate and I feel like it's so important to have community around us I mean we're all gonna go through tough times it's just inevitable we're humans the world's not a perfect place and unfortunately there is darkness on the earth but it is so important to have your people around you because like back in the day when people lived in tribes they would do life together they'd be with each other during the highs during the lows and without having a supportive system around you it can loneliness can eat away at your soul a hundred percent do you know about um like uh blue zones like, have you heard much about? Yes. Yes, okay, yes. We talked about them in IIN, but, um, and then I ended up getting his book. Oh, really? Um, and then he also has a cookbook too, which is really cool. But Ooh. the blue zones for anyone who doesn't know, they're, um, five, I think it's five, five or seven places in the earth where people are the healthiest. And one of the characteristics of the blue zones are they live in tribes and, you know, even if it's, you know, not like a, you know, a traditional like tribe that you would think, yeah. but they live in community. So, you know, you're not too far from your grandparents or your aunts and uncles come over every day and, you know, or even just your friends, like they just are truly doing life together, like you yeah. said, and we've lost that now in society. Like it's very normal to live by yourself in a one bedroom apartment and just like be alone all the time. And that's not really how we're wired. I know. And we're going to dive so much more into this. I feel like we could talk about this for hours. So absolutely. I could talk about this we for talk hours. On your podcast yeah. so we can transition to that episode. So we're going to go listen to that one now, but okay. Thanks for coming on. We're going to have to have you on again. Cause yeah, I have to record for time. like hours, but where can everyone find you? Go follow her. She's amazing. Thanks. Um, I am uh, Lily Rayco on Instagram, 80, 20 pod on Instagram. That's eight zero two zero POD. 8020 is available on Spotify, Apple, anywhere else you listen to podcasts. Um, LilyRayco.com. I've got some resources on there or like opportunities to contact me. And um, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of me in a nutshell. Yay. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me, Callie. All right, everyone go listen to The Swap. Thanks again for listening to today's episode. If you love this episode, don't forget to leave a rating. It helps the show so much. Also, please tag me in your stories on Instagram at Healthy Beam and Pod, and I'll be sure to repost you. Feel free to DM me anytime with any questions, any topic requests, anything you want me to talk about, any guests you want to see on the show. I'm all yours. All right, have the best day ever. Keep shining and being amazing, and I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye, my gorgeous queen.